Hello, Gordig here, and today we're going to look at rigging inside Daz Studio using the donor rig option. So, what I have is a dog skeleton that I want to rig using the skeleton of Daz Dog 8. That'll let me use Dog 8 poses with it, and it also just saves me a lot of time cr creating the skeleton from scratch. So, let's import the skeleton into our scene. And the first thing that we're going to notice is that it is gigantic. What you may also notice is that this widget is facing the wrong direction. So the green y-axis is supposed to be facing up in Daz Studio, and the blue z-axis should be facing forward. So we're going to solve both of those problems. So first off, let's resize the skeleton so that it's roughly dog 8 sized. That's about 6%. Lines up fairly well with our dog 8. It's not perfect, but it'll do for now. Then we want to file export as a wavefront object. I've already done that, so let's look at the skeleton re-imported into our scene. It looks the same. So the next thing to do is so with the skeleton selected, go to Edit, Object, Rigging, and Convert Prop to Figure. And we're going to be using General Weight Mapping. So we hit Accept, and now our figure has a bone. So let's switch to our Joint Editor, which is one of the three main tools we're going to be using in this exercise. To do that, we're going to Alt, Shift, J, and now we see the bone that was created when we converted that prop to a figure. It's just one big bone sticking up through the middle from the floor to the top of the, of the object. We don't need that bone, so we're just going to right-click, Delete, and Delete Bone. What we need now is the rigging from Dog8. So select Dog8, and now we see all of these bones that we are going to steal by going to Edit, Figure, Rigging, and Extract Donor Figure. So that created an extra donor Dog8 in our scene. Expand that out to the hip. Right-click in the viewport. Edit, Reparent Bone. We're going to select the figure we just created, hit Accept, and now all of those bones belong to our figure instead of the donor. So we can just delete the donor now. So, if we look at our skeleton, let's hide Dog8. If we look at our skeleton, we can see that it doesn't exactly line up in a lot of places. So we're going to need to move these bones around. So let's select one of our bones, in this case the left haunch. And just for convenience, let's frame it in our camera. So, right now, if we were to weight map this physical bone, this part of the mesh, to this bone, the rotations would be super wonky, because this is our pivot point. So what we need to do is move the bone so that it rotates from the correct location. I'm just eyeballing it right now. That looks good enough. Let's move it on the X a little bit. And then we're going to get our end point. And again, I'm not being super meticulous right now. I'm just eyeballing it. You also have fine control over here in the tool settings pane if you want to use that. I am mostly just going to use the mouse in the viewport, but I will be changing the rotation so that it lines up with the endpoint like so. So now we've got one bone lined up where we need it to be. 
So our next step, this is somewhat optional, but it does help, and it is essential for a step that we're going to be doing later. Let's switch to our geometry editor, Alt-Shift-G. Now, if you've never used the geometry editor before, there are a couple things you can do that will make it a whole lot easier for you. You just drag your mouse over the, the polygons and it'll select those. But this won't always work. It's going to depend on how your mesh is set up and exactly what you're trying to do. But fortunately, the way this model was set up, I can just select a single polygon and control asterisk to select connected. You can also right click, geometry selection, select connected like that. So once we've got that selected, let's right click, geometry assignment, and create face group from selected. We're dealing with the left haunch right now, so for convenience sake, we're just going to name our face group the same thing as the bone. All right, so now we've got our joint positioned where we need it to be, at least roughly. We've got our part of the mesh assigned to a face group. So the next thing we need to do is the actual weight mapping. So let's Alt Shift W to select the node weight map brush, which is the third of the main tools that we're gonna be using here. Now we're weight mapping and Right now we're doing a skeleton, so there are advantages and disadvantages to that. If we look at the dog ate really quick, let's select, say, the abdomen. So you look at all these colors, and that is the weight map. That is what tells Daz Studio how the mesh should be moving as the bones move. So the red, the dark part right here, is weighted heavily towards abdomen one. But the blue veering off to yellow at the edges are weighted to the bones ahead of it and behind it, meaning that if I move the left haunch, if I move abdomen two, it's going to move these parts and a little bit less in here and so on. And that's how weight mapping works. But we're dealing with a skeleton which is composed entirely of hard surfaces, so bones don't really need to flex, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's switch back to our skeleton. And I, I should be a little more careful about how I use certain words since we're dealing with a rig and also a physical skeleton, so there's some terminology overlap. All right, so with the left haunch, bone selected, we need this to have a general weight map. So add map, and if your skeleton disappears at this point, all you need to do is go up to skinning, general weight mode, and select dual quaternion. Now, because of a quirk in Daz Studio, we clicked Add Map, but it's not available here, so all we have to do is select a different bone and go back, and now we have our general weight. Since the geometry is already selected, all we have to do is right-click, Weight Editing, Fill Selected, and again, it's a skeleton. We don't need it to flex, so we can just do 100%. Oh look, everything turned red. That's because right now there's no weight assigned to anything at all. We can get around this by adding our general weight map to the hip. Right click, geometry selection, select all. Make sure general weights is selected over here. And fill 100%. Now, when we weight map the left haunch, all we're doing is stealing that weight mapping away from the hip, which has all of the other weight mapping. So now we've got that 100% weighted to the bone in the, in the rig. So if we rotate the bone, 
it's going to move. And you can see it's not exactly perfect where I put that pivot point. So what we want to do is switch back to our joint editor and just play around a little bit with where that pivot point is positioned. That's a little bit worse. Let's move it down just a hair. Not perfect, but good enough for right now. So you notice that only that one bone that we've weight mapped is moving, and that is exactly for that reason. Nothing else is weight mapped yet. So if we follow that same procedure for left lower thigh, let's move that bone to where we need it. Oops. Stop that. Okay. All right, there we go. So we've got the lower thigh joint positioned about where we need it. So what we want to do is switch back to our weight map brush, add that general weight map. And now, since we skipped the geometry editor step for this one, and we're going to do the geometry selection within the weight map brush tool. Switch brush mode to geometry selection, since we're not going to be manually painting weights right now. Click a, a polygon, control asterisk to select connected, weight editing, fill selected to 100. Now we can also see how well we did oop and that shows us a goof i made because of course the shin is actually two bones not one so we need to also select that bone and fill with a hundred so again it's not perfect but it is good enough for what we need now we select the left haunch, and now both bones move as they should. Now, here's the reason we did that thing with the geometry editor earlier. We've got our left haunch selected, switch back to our joint editor, and now, selection group, let's select our left haunch. What that does for us is it lets us hide that bone. It also lets us select it in the viewport, whereas we can't select any other part of it right now because it doesn't have a face group associated with it. So those are the main steps. I've already gone through and done all of this work, so let me just pull up the completed version. All right, so now we've got the entire completed skeleton. As you can see, I changed some of the positions around so that the bones lined up close, more closely to how they are in the Daz Dog 8. That way, if you apply dog poses to it, they're going to more accurately reflect what they should look like. I straighten the tail out, I move the legs back, so now that I've done all that, let's click on a pose for dog eight. Let's go sitting and then running and laying head down. Now we can start to see the downsides of this approach. 
for example, let's undo to get back to just the base model. Let's select. So if you look at the left pastern, you notice that these bones are not in a straight line, either at the top or at the bottom. There's some variation on two different axes. So what that means for us is that we have to make some decisions about exactly where the joints pivot and how much kind of goofiness we can live with. Because with only one joint, and the same thing is true of the four toes, look at where those meet the pastern, and now they're going to be clipping through and kind of falling away from the bones above them. And without adding more bones so that we have finer control over those parts of the mesh, we just have to decide what we can live with, basically. And the problem with either not weight mapping those, making them part of the pastern and just ignoring the four toes bone in the rig, or creating new bones, is that that would break compatibility with the dog poses. Whereas, now let me pull it back out. Again, it's not perfect. Some adjustment might be necessary, but it's pretty usable. All right, so I hope this has been helpful, and I will see you next time.